Robert was a collector of rare coins. One day, the man called the police. I got this coin only yesterday, he cried. I've been looking for it for several years, and now it's gone. I'll bet it's one of my brothers. Frederick and Matthew live together with me. One of them collects ancient books, and the other is crazy about rare stamps. All our collections are kept in one large room. The police started to ask Robert for more details. It turned out that the key from the room where all the collections were was kept in a vase standing on the fireplace. The only person who visited the house was Robert's friend, Mark. The man liked the coin so much that he started offering big money for it. But Robert didn't agree to sell it. In the morning, he came to check on the coin, but it was missing. When the police arrived, they found out the room had been opened with the key. The police didn't find any fingerprints either. Do you know who stole the coin? It was Mark. He was the only person who had a reason for getting rid of the fingerprints. The brothers' fingerprints would be absolutely natural since they lived there. There was a blackout in the city, but the bus driver still noticed a dog on the road and managed to stop in time. How did he do this? This accident happened during the day. It's nothing but holes tied to other holes. At the same time, it's as strong as steel, but not as stiff as a pole. What is it? It's a chain. Stephen's wife called the police and told them her husband had disappeared right from his garage. It happened several hours ago. The only thing she found there was a left-hand glove. When the police came, they saw it was a very peculiar glove. Such gloves were sold only in one store in their town. The store owner told them he had recently sold these gloves only to two people, Kevin, Stephen's neighbor, and Brian, Stephen's colleague at work. The police officers visited Kevin and asked the man to show them his gloves. But Kevin had just one. I uh, lost the other glove a week ago, and I don't have any other gloves. The man even pulled the glove on to demonstrate it to the officers. Then the police visited Brian. I was wearing these gloves when I was repairing my car. They got so dirty that I threw them away. Who do you think knows something about Steven's disappearance? Brian. Kevin put his glove on his left hand, and the glove Stephen's wife found was also for the left hand. A math teacher told his students about the Roman numerals. After that, he asked them to draw just one continuous line and turn IX into 6. The only condition was that the students were not to lift their pens from the paper until the line was finished. Jeffrey was the first to complete this task. How did he do this? He drew the letter S in front of IX and got 6. Both Sharon and Cynthia had a box of chocolates each. There were 14 chocolates in each box. Sharon ate several candies, and Cynthia ate the same number of chocolates that were left in Sharon's box. How many chocolates do they have together now? They still have 14 chocolates together. Kimberly inherited an old house from a rich aunt. When the young woman was exploring the cellar, she came across a massive wooden door. She opened it and saw a small room. In that room, there were three bags and a note on the floor. One of the bags has $1 million, and the others are empty. You can only open one bag, so think carefully. Kimberly also noticed there was a message on each bag. On the first bag, it said, the cash is not here. The message on the second bag was, the cash is not here. And the message on the third bag claimed, the cash is in the second bag. If only one message is true, which bag has the money?
The money can't be in the second or third bags. If it was so, then two messages would be true. It means the money is in the first bag. When you look for something, you'll always find it in the last place where you search. Why is that? It's always the last place where you look because, after this, there's no need to continue your search. A married couple went on a vacation and asked their neighbor to look after their house. When they returned, the wife found out that she had lost all her expensive jewelry, and it happened because of a power failure, no less. The woman had hidden her jewelry in a supposedly safe place. The house hadn't been burgled. The neighbor was an honest person. The jewelry had disappeared by accident. What happened? The wife hid her jewelry in the freezer in a bag with frozen food. After the power failure, the food got spoiled. The neighbor decided to help and threw away all the bad food from the fridge along with the jewelry. You're locked in a room with three doors. It's safe to walk through any of them, but the doorknobs are the real problem. One of them puts out high voltage. The second is covered with poison. Just one drop on your skin and you won't survive. And the third doorknob is so hot, it will make your hand burn. What doorknob should you opt for? The second one. You can take off any piece of clothing and open the door with its help. This way, you won't touch the doorknob with your bare hand. A woman was hit by a car that sped away right after the accident. When the police arrived, they found several witnesses who described the car. The detective went to the house of one of the suspects. There, he saw a car that looked like the one in the description. But when he questioned its owner, the man claimed he had spent the whole day at home. The detective realized the suspect was lying right away. How? He touched the hood of the car. It was still warm from the engine. I was driving along the highway when one of my tires burst. I stopped to change it, but when I came back to the car, I saw it had a flat battery. I looked around and realized I was in the middle of a small town. I decided to wait for someone who could help me. Suddenly, I heard glass shatter. The night was very dark, so I switched on the headlights and saw a man climbing out of a house. He was carrying a large bag. I got scared and ran to the nearest police station. That was Mr. Darrison's story. The police detective who was listening to him asked, And where did you hide everything you had stolen from that house? How did he come to that conclusion? If Mr. Darrison's car battery was flat, how could he switch on the headlights? Dylan was trapped in a basement. The only thing he found inside was a note and a pen. Find the way to get 200 out of 188 with one line, and you'll be free. Five minutes later, the door opened automatically, and Dylan was free. What did he do? He drew the line to divide 188 horizontally. That way, he got two ones and four zeros. A woman in a purple dress exclaimed, I've never been to this store, Cinderella dresses. What kind of name is this? But many people claim that a woman in purple took all the money from the cash desk while the shop assistant was away and ran out of the store, Detective Smith told the woman. The woman exclaimed, I was just standing outside when suddenly a woman charged at me. Of course I got scared and ran away. Then a police officer saw me running and stopped me. I agreed to return to the store, hoping it'd clear up the confusion. Several visitors said I could be the thief, but they weren't sure. Now I know you're the woman who stole the money, the detective said. How did he figure it out?
The woman said return to the store, which means she had been there before and lied about the whole situation. Your company produces shoes. You have two factories in different cities. The workers of both factories have started to steal shoes. You can't use any additional security, but you have to stop the theft. How can you do it? One factory should start making only left shoes, and the other only right ones. Detective Aaron Bowler participated in a competition organized by a private consultant who came from Europe. Aaron wanted to become the detective of the year very much. It was the evening of the last day of the competition. The consultant explained what would happen next. You will all gather in a large room. Once you hear a shot outside, you'll need to rush in and find the criminal. The winner will be the person who will get to them first. You aren't allowed to use any equipment or tools. Several hours passed, and the people in the room started to get nervous. Suddenly, Aaron got up and went to another room. His colleagues asked him where he went. But the guy only answered, I need to get ready for the chase. And he took a seat without switching on the light. Several minutes later, the detectives heard the shot. Aaron ran outside and was the first to catch the criminal. The consultant gave the man his prize and asked, what helped you to be the first? What did Aaron answer? His eyes didn't need to get used to the darkness outside because he had already spent some time in a dark place. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now they have two options. Take a high-speed train for 100 bucks to go to the right airport, or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. The boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take the high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? This woman over there is a zombie. Wow, how did she get through security? When it was finally time to board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate, but it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. The glamorous lady began to chat with Kim and Ashley. She told them she had recently visited an exotic island with her friends. Then she showed the girl some pictures. When the lady went to the bathroom, Ashley whispered to Kim, This woman is a liar. She photoshopped his picture. How did Ashley know that? It's all about the shadows. They all look natural, except for this one. The glamorous lady took a sip of her juice and started coughing. Suddenly, she fainted and fell into the billionaire's arms. He was ready to shout for help, but Kim stopped him, saying the woman was faking it. How did she know that? Look at the content of her bag. It's full of the billionaire's pictures and magazine articles. She also has a tattoo with his portrait on her leg. This woman is obsessed with him. It was lunchtime, and the billionaire offered Kim to play a game. There were three boxes. One of them contained a meal. There was a statement on each box, but only one of them was true. 
Can you help him figure out which box has food inside? If the food is in the first box, there are two true statements. And if the food is in the third box, there are also two true statements. But we need just one true statement. That's why the food can only be in the second box. Kim opened the box. She saw a delicious meal and a bank card. The billionaire said, congratulations, you've won $5 million. Enjoy your trip. Kim and Ashley landed in Rome and went to get their luggage. It turned out that Ashley had had the same suitcase as two other passengers, and they had a little quarrel. Can you help distribute the three suitcases among these people? The first suitcase belongs to this woman. It's covered in her dog's hair. The second suitcase has some traces of a star sticker. You've probably noticed it before on Ashley's bag. And the third suitcase belongs to this man. Since Kim and Ashley were now very rich, they decided to find a real estate agent who could help them rent a luxurious villa. They wanted to spend their vacation there. The agent showed them three houses. Can you help the girls choose the best one? There are cockroaches in the first house. Mm, They won't make very pleasant neighbors. The second house is too old. There's a crack in the wall, which doesn't look safe. And the third house looks pretty good. As for the pool, it can be easily cleaned. Yes! Kim and Ashley left the villa and went sightseeing. When they returned, they found out that someone had stolen their passports from the safe. The girls called the police, and they interrogated three suspects. The chef was too busy making dinner for Kim and Ashley. The cleaner was dealing with the pool all day. And the gardener said he had been outside planting flowers. He didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? the gardener. If he planted the flowers, where are they? The police returned Kim and Ashley their passports and arrested the gardener. The next day, the girls went shopping. Sellers wanted to take advantage of rich and naive tourists and offer them overpriced souvenirs. Only one of these three items is a good deal. Can you guess which one? Take a look at this Venetian mask. It says made in China, which means that this mask can't be real. This magnet is of very low quality. The word Italy is spelled with an error. It simply can't cost $100. This blue cheese doesn't look fresh, but it's normal for this kind of product. This delicacy is the only thing that Kim and Ashley can buy here for a fair price. The ladies went to the local museum and got lost in its corridors. They found a strange basement with three doors. There was a time portal to the Middle Ages behind the first door. Behind the second door, there was an evil mummy. It cursed anyone who bothered it. Finally, the third door was protected with a laser alarm system. It cut through anything that touched the laser beams. Which door should the girls choose? The second one. The mummy is sleeping peacefully inside its sarcophagus. If Kim and Ashley are quiet and don't come close, they can just walk by it. When the girls got outside, they saw a crowd of reporters around the museum. Someone has stolen the most expensive painting. The police questioned three suspects. Giovanni, the cleaner, said he had been washing the bathroom when the theft happened. Hmm. Luca, the museum guide, saw a suspicious woman with a large folder not far from the crime scene. And Bianca, the suspicious woman, was just drawing sketches as part of her art school homework. Who's lying? Luca. He has a rolled canvas under his shirt. Kim and Ashley came to a restaurant to enjoy the local cuisine. But they noticed a vampire among the visitors. So the girls decided to leave. Which visitor is the vampire? This elderly lady is wearing sunglasses in the evening. Also, she doesn't have a shadow. (laughs) Then Kim and Ashley took a boat trip. A local photographer took their picture and printed it on two similar t-shirts. Then he offered the girls to buy these souvenirs. But Kim noticed three differences between these pictures. Can you see them too? (laughs) 
here they are. The ladies came to a bakery. Kim ordered a salad and coffee, Mm. while Ashley wanted to eat something sweet. The barista offered her three remaining options. Help Ashley make the right choice. Someone has already tasted this cupcake. Ants live inside this donut. It's probably not very fresh. But this croissant is safe. The green color is pistachio glaze, not mold. In the evening, Kim and Ashley arrived at the villa. The owner was there, and he was furious. He hadn't received any rental payment because Kim and Ashley's card presented by the billionaire was blocked. Suddenly, they heard breaking news on TV. Some scammers had robbed the billionaire. All his accounts were empty. Three people commented on the situation. The billionaire's driver said his boss had many enemies. The billionaire's girlfriend complained that now she couldn't even afford a new haircut. And his PA said they would try to return the money soon. Ashley knew for sure that one of them was hiding something. But who? The girlfriend. If she had no money, how come she left the boutique with so many purchases? The owner of the villa offered Kim and Ashley a deal. If you manage to prepare my favorite cocktail, I'll forget about your debt. The girls had no choice, so they agreed. The man gave them the recipe, but the last ingredient was coded. Can you guess what ingredient it is? If you mix blue and yellow, you'll get green. So the ingredient must be green grapes. Next morning, Kim and Ashley woke up locked in a room with two doors as the only exit. If they chose the wrong door, they would stay in the room forever. And if they picked the correct door, they would end up with loads of jewelry, money, and designer clothing that would be enough for the rest of their lives. Two guards were standing in front of them. One guard always lied, while the other always told the truth. Kim and Ashley didn't know their identities. The girls could only ask one question. What should they ask? The question should be, if I asked the other guard which door leads to the treasures, what would he say? If they asked the guard who always tells the truth, he would say that the other guard would point to the wrong door. And if they asked the liar, he would point to the wrong door too. In either case, both guards would point to the wrong door. So Kim and Ashley should just choose the other door. I have a math workout for you today, but first, let's have a little warm-up. How many ducks do you see in this picture? Don't forget about the hidden ones. There are 15 ducks. Did you find them all? Okay, now count all the flowers. Right! There are 17 of them. Can you spot three differences between these photos? Here they are. And another one. There are three differences again. Do you see them? Okay, here they are. Good job! Okay, now a bit of math for you. Look at this picture. The only number multiplied by itself that gives 25 is 5, so this shape equals 5. This way, the other shape from the second equation is 4. 4 and 6 make 10, so the red circle equals 6. Then, 5 multiplied by 6 gives us 30. This one is similar, but a bit harder, so be very attentive. Okay, 3 pairs of sneakers make 30. Then 1 pair equals 10. Then 1 cat with a whistle must be 5. In this case, two whistles equal four, so one whistle is two. Now the last one. A pair of sneakers is ten, 
We know that a cat with a whistle is 5, but this kitty doesn't have a whistle. But since a whistle is 2, the cat without a whistle must be 3. And a whistle equals 2. So, it's 10 plus 3 multiplied by 2, which is 16. Ava and Dakota are sisters. When Dakota was 18, Ava was half her age. Now that Dakota is 26, how old is Ava? When Dakota was 18, Ava was 9, so the age difference between the sisters is 9 years. If Dakota is 26 now, then Ava is 17. When Polaris was 16 years old, her mother was 39. If Polaris's mom is twice her daughter's age, how old is Polaris? The age difference between Polaris and her mother is 23 years. That means now, Polaris is 23 and her mom is 46. Yvonne had a big collection of CDs. One day, she decided to clean up her house and counted that she had 172 CDs. She sold them all, except for 7 CDs of her favorite singer and 5 CDs of her favorite band. How many CDs does Yvonne have now? Well, if she gave up all but 7 plus 5, it leaves her with 12 CDs. In PE class, all students were standing in a circle. If the 5th student was exactly opposite the 12th student, how many students were in the circle? Between student number 5 and student number 12, there are 6 other students. If these two are opposite each other, then on the other side between them, there are also 6 students. This makes 14 students in the circle. Danica owns a candy store. She sells candy for $0.12 a dozen. How many candy pieces can you get if you have $1? $0.12 for a dozen mean that one candy costs one cent. So if you have a dollar, you can get 100 candies. For casting a spell, Flora should put these stones in the correct order. She has four of them, purple, green, red, and blue. The instruction says, 1. The red one only has one stone next to it. 2. The green and purple stones aren't next to each other. 3. The green stone is the last one. Can you help Flora? If the red stone only has one other stone next to it, then it's either the first one or the last one. But since green is the last one, then red is the first one. If the green and purple stones aren't next to each other, then there's the blue stone between them. So. The correct order is red, purple, blue, and green. It was midday. Kaylin was exploring a big local forest. She found an abandoned mansion and entered it. The door closed behind her back and wouldn't open. Oh, no. Kaylin got trapped inside. There were three other doors leading to freedom, but there was a catch. Behind the first door, there was a huge pit that would take her miles underground. Behind the second door, there was a magnifying glass that concentrated sunlight and burned everybody and everything that entered. Behind the third door, there was a hungry and dangerous lion that would eat anybody and anything that entered. Uh oh. How can Kaylin escape? Kaylin should wait until sunset. When the sun goes down, the second door with the magnifying glass won't be dangerous anymore. Amelia, Belle, Chloe, and Della are identical quadruplets who always prank people. One day, one of the girls' teachers had to let Amelia leave the class early. She had a doctor's appointment. But the woman wasn't sure which girl was Amelia. 
the quadruplets had decided to help her. Here is what they said. Amelia is one of the girls standing in the middle. No, Amelia is one of the girls standing on the sides. I'm Amelia. I'm not Amelia. Three girls lied and one told the truth. Who is Amelia? If Amelia is the first girl, then two girls told the truth, the second and the fourth ones. If Amelia is the second girl, then the first and the fourth girls told the truth. If Amelia is the third girl, then the first and the third ones told the truth. But if Amelia is the fourth girl, then only the second girl told the truth. So, Amelia must be the fourth girl. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She found a witch's house, petted her black cat and asked the witch to send her home. The witch wanted to play a game. If Esme won, she'd send her home. But if Esme lost, she'd have to stay with the witch forever. We'll be saying numbers between 1 and 10. The next player will have to choose a number that's between 1 to 10 greater than the previous one. The first person to say 50 wins. You can start. How can Esme win? If she wants to say 50, she needs the witch to say a number between 40 and 49. So, before 50, she has to say 39. If she wants to say 39, the witch has to say a number between 29 and 38. So, Esme has to say 28, and before that, 17, and before that, 6. So, Esme must start with 6, and then say 17, 28, 39, and 50. Cassidy woke up in a dungeon and couldn't remember what happened to her. She needed to get out, but the door was locked and required a password. Can you guess what the password is? Every next number is made by moving the last digit of the previous four to the front. So, the password must be... Four, seven, two, eight. Mrs. Davies is an elderly lady telling a story of her life. After I lived one-fourth of my life, I got my first car. I married one-twelfth of my life later. One-sixth of my life later, I started a business. One-fourth of my life later, I got my first granddaughter. She just turned 18. How old is Mrs. Davies? Let's say Mrs. Davies is X years old. One fourth of her life, till she gets her first car, X is four. Then we add 12 till her marriage, X till opening her business, four till the birth of her granddaughter, and finally 18 years from then till now. It should all be equal to x. If you solve this equation, you'll figure out that x is equal to 72. So, Mrs. Davies must be 72 years old. Esme was walking in the forest, and you know what? She didn't get lost this time. She knew how to get home, but the other road led to the <laughs> witch's house, and the girl recently came up with a cool riddle for the witch. So, Esme decided to pay her a visit. She offered a deal. If the witch couldn't solve her riddle, Esme would get her cat. The witch agreed, and Esme gave her a square piece of paper, 4 inches by 4 inches, with a total area of 16 square inches. Turn it into a square with a total area of 8 square inches without a ruler. How can the witch do it? The witch should fold the four corners of the square towards the middle. This way, she'll get a square that is exactly twice as small as the original one. Apparently, the witch gets to keep her cat this time. There's a box filled with balls of different colors. Five red ones, eight blue ones, and eleven purple ones. Allison has a tricky task. Blindfolded, she has to keep picking up balls until she's sure that she has balls of at least two different colors. 
What's the minimum number of balls she should pull out of the box? In the worst case scenario, Allison will be picking up balls of the same color until there are no more of them left in the box. The majority of balls are purple, so if she picks up a purple ball every single time, it'll be 11 balls. And only after that will she get a ball of a different color, so she should pick up 12 balls.